Hey, Miss Miklos here, and today we are talking about section 7.4, inverse functions. And um, we've spent a lot of time back in chapter 2 talking about what functions are, but this whole concept of inverse is what's new today. And we're really going to be looking at three different things when it comes to inverse functions. The definition of an inverse function, um, you can read the formal definition in the book if you want, but I just am putting it kind of in normal terms. It basically means we are switching the domain and the range. And you guys may remember that domain mean the x, means the x values and range means the y values. So if two functions are inverses of each other, it means the x and the y are changed. Or we could think of this as the input is switched with the output. Okay, and those are all terms that we used back in chapter 2. The next thing we're going to talk about is graphs of inverse functions, and this is actually something we do not spend a ton of time on, but you do need to know at the pre-calculus level. So if we graph two inverse functions, we will notice that they are reflections of each other. In fact, they are reflections over the line y equals x. Okay, so if we ever look graphically, that is the important thing we need to know about inverse functions. So we're going to start by looking at ordered pairs first. And here is our original relation. We know a relation is any set of ordered pairs. It doesn't need to have one in output for every input like a function does. But if you notice, it's just a bunch of ordered pairs, negative 2, 4, negative 1, 2, 0, 0, 1, negative 2, and 2, negative 4. And we're going to go ahead and find the inverse relation. So to find the inverse relation, all I did, I took negative 2, 4, and I switched the x and the y. Negative 1, 2 became 2, negative 1. 0, 0 became 0, 0. 1, negative 2 became negative 2, 1. 2, negative 4 became negative 4, 2. So we switched our domain and we switched our range. When we're dealing with ordered pairs, that's all we need to do. And now we're going to go ahead and look at a graph of this relation. So if we look at the graph, okay, I've gone ahead and this was our original relation. And these ordered pairs here were the ordered pairs we came up when we did the inverse. And what I want you to pay attention to, I actually graphed the line y equals x. And I noticed that these points here are all reflections. So if I physically took this and I folded over this line, all these ordered pairs would line up. Okay, so this is just an example of how two inverse functions are reflected over this line y equals x. This next problem is really the heart of what we're going to be doing in this lesson. So it's asking us to find the equation of the inverse function and then it's giving us a linear function. And the key thing for us to remember is this phrase, switch and solve. Okay, and if we remember switch and solve, our actual work is not going to be very tough. So what switch and solve means is to switch x and y. And you guys may be thinking, well, I don't see a y anywhere, but we know f of x is the same thing as y. So I'm going to go ahead and write x equals 2 times y minus 4. So all we did was switch our two variables. Next thing I want to do is solve this equation for y. So in this case, I'm going to have to add 4 to both sides, and then I'm going to have to divide by 2. Okay, so technically, this is the equation of our function. Now, um, the best way that we can write this, this is some new notation, would be the inverse of f is equal to x plus 4 over 2. So I just want us to highlight this terminology and notation right there. That actually indicates that something is the inverse of f of x. So that's the best way we can write it because we're actually explaining what's going on. So two steps here, switch, we switched x and y. Solve, we solve the equation for y. And that's about all that there is to it. 
Let's do another one. g of x equals negative 3x plus 6. So I'm starting by switching x equals negative 3y plus 6. And now I'm going to solve for y. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract 6 and then divide both sides by negative 3. So I get x minus 6 divided by negative 3 is equal to our inverse. And I realize that we can do more or write this in a different way if we wanted to, but it is totally fine if you just leave it like this. Let's just do one more of these to make sure that we're feeling okay before we move on to the final concept. Okay, once again, I'm going to start here by switching x and y. And now I'm going to solve for y. So I'm going to add 1. So I have x plus 1 equals 1 third y. I need to multiply both sides by 3 now to get rid of that 1 third. And I get 3x plus 3 is equal to our inverse function. So honestly, that's all it comes down to when we are finding the equation of the inverse. We are switching our variables and solving for y. Final concept um, is verifying if two given functions are inverses. And the way we can do that, we know functions f and g, or whatever two letters are representing the functions, are inverses if f of g of x is equal to x and g of f of x is equal to x. So in this part, we are combining this concept of inverse functions with the concept of composition. Okay, so this problem, I'm verifying that f and g are inverses of each other. So if we look, f of x is 2x minus 4, g of x is 1 half x plus 2. This is one of those types of problems that it's really important that we're showing all of the work. So let's go ahead and try this out. So I'm going to do f of g of x to begin with. So that would become f of 1 half x plus 2 which, once again, just to remind us, means in function f, wherever there's an x, I'm replacing it with 1 half x plus 2. So I get 2 times 1 half x plus 2 minus 4. Because all I did, I took 2x minus 4 and I substituted in for x. So I'm going to go ahead and distribute, and I get x plus 4 minus 4, which is x. So we're halfway there. Now I need to double check what is g of f of x equal to. So if I'm going through this, g of 2x minus 4. So that means in function g, wherever there's an x, I'm replacing it with 2x minus 4. So I'm going to have 1 half times 2x minus 4 plus 2. When I go ahead and distribute, I get x minus 2 plus 2, which is x. So what we did here is we went ahead and we verified that they are inverses. What I would be grading is all of your work here. So these are all the steps that you would need to show. Um, and I am almost always going to give you one that will work out to be inverses. So if you skip from here to x, you're not getting any points because I need to see that you understand how to use composition. Let's just do one more of these and then we'll be good to go. Okay, verify that f and g are inverses and I totally messed up on writing 5 so we're pretending that's a lovely 5 and it's okay. So I'm going to start with f of g of x. This time, g of x is negative 1 third x plus 2. So that means in function f, wherever there's an x, I'm replacing it with negative 1 third x plus 2. So I have negative 3 times negative 1 third x plus 2 plus 6. When I distribute, I end up getting x minus 6 plus 6, which is x. So we are good. Second one here, I'm going to do g of f of x. So I'm going to do g 
of negative 3x plus 6. So this time in function g, wherever there's an x, I went ahead and I'm going to substitute in 4x. So I'm going to replace it with negative 3x plus 6. So I'm going to do negative 1 third times negative 3x plus 6 plus 2. When I distribute, I get x minus 2 plus 2, which is x. So once again, through all my work using composition, I have proved that these are inverses of each other. Okay, so hopefully you're feeling good on this concept. I didn't assign a ton of these on the homework, so you can definitely do some additional problems if you need more help on them.